I watched I watched Bill Burr's Paper Tigers uh, with my wife and my friend Vincent Didiano, host of the P.O. Vincent podcast. Shout out to Vinny. Shout out to my wife. And uh, uh, it it's decent. That's sort of what I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say about it. It's decent. I don't think it's his best special. But I also don't think the last special he put out was his best special. Like, I don't remember a whole, whole lot about it. Um, I remember the story about the gorilla. Uh, that's sort of the standout joke to me. Um, but other than that, like, you know, it came out right after the 2016 election. Um, and he talks about like Hillary Clinton and stuff and uh, I, I don't know uh, I felt like that special was okay uh, the one before that the black and white special uh, oh wait he did something at the ta- uh, in Georgia uh, I'm getting my Bill Burr specials messed up this is probably why I should have probably fucking brought my notes looked up his specials a little bit the black and white special that he put out is my favorite special that he's done I think that special kind of uh, emerged these two forms of comedy, like like the old school one sided conversation type stuff, and the new school observational uh, satire commentary style of comedy. And there's a lot of act outs, and and uh, and the what he has to say is a lot is very poignant. Uh, but, and then I kind of feel like he hasn't been able to top that since then uh, I'm trying to think of if he put anything out in 2018 or 2017 even I don't know if he did uh, I think I think the last special he did put out was uh, was the one that he did right around the election um, so there was that and then the the other special that I really think is is poignant and solid was you people are all the same which is I think his first Netflix special um, because I think like Comedy Central and HBO didn't want to give him a special or something like that, so Netflix offered him some specials, and they've been killing it. They've been killing it on Netflix. He's been doing really, really well on Netflix. So, um, uh, here's what I really enjoyed about the special. I really liked. What he, like the stuff that he talked about his daughter, but not they're not jokes about his kids, right? They're not like oh, our kids fucking blah. You know, like they're not jokes about that. It's it's about reflection on himself as a father when he's got deep seated anger issues, um, and when he start uh, uh, that to me is sort of the crux of all of it, and uh, and, and a lot of it is like him just trying to be a better person through all of the shit that he has had to deal with in his life of like where does this anger come from and it comes from like past traumas and fucked up shit that that parents do right and it, and it kind of gives you an understanding of like where he is and what he's trying to work through um and and those parts are are the funniest parts of of the special because it's it's not just very relatable but it's also very poignant of being like this is what it used to be and this is where where like this generation is stuck there's like this in between generation and we're stuck between like the old school baby boomer this is how society is this is how tradition works to like the new school of we can be better but we're stuck with all this trauma from our fucking childhood that's just like holding us back a little bit because we're just like fuck you're just fucking you know like we, we we're giving into those uh the the uh, our, our uncontrolled unfiltered emotions which for bill burr is anger right and uh and he talks about like not being able to deal with uh with with having to let go of his dog and things like that and, and those things to me are like the best parts about the special. They're also the funniest elements of the special. They're the most poignant parts about the special. Uh, and uh, and there, the couple things that I didn't like was it, he was just so brash about dealing with some of the uh, some of the, the the culture politics, the the identity politics issues that we see, and criticizing the left, which I do. I criticize the left a whole bunch. The, the show I'm working on now, and the last show I just 
uh, recorded and released back in June, there's a lot of critical elements about the left. Uh, I've spent a lot of my career taking shots at the right and, and their belief systems, and it's not like that all has gone away or anything i am going after the identitarian politics of the left and a lot of like what i do on my podcasts and my show is exactly that is criticizing the the right and the left um and and kind of going into the deeper deeper elements of it bill burr does not go into the deeper elements of it like he's not going to talk about corporatism or imperialism um but he does call out like privilege right is uh he has a great bit in the front of his uh, special about uh, how like white women are throwing his white male privilege like it's getting more and more specific about uh, who we should be offended at and it's becoming like this offense culture is how we feel like we're we're participating in protest um, and we're we you know we're becoming these microcosms of, of smaller and smaller categories that we put ourselves into and further and further dividing ourselves up from um, and, and I will get into that a little bit more in just a little bit, but he kind of hits on that where, where he's like, what are you talking about? We're, we're, on, we're in the same jacuzzi together, right? Like, basically saying, like, look, our, our privilege is our privilege. Like, everybody has it. Like, microcosmically categorizing it isn't helping anything in this situation. And, and it was a great joke. And it's a great joke that, like, touches on class just a little bit. Um... But he's very heavy-handed. That's that's what I think is is sort of the problem with the special is it's incredibly heavy-handed. Whereas Chappelle's special had a lot of subtlety built around it, um, and not uh, you know the more I've kind of thought about the Chappelle special, I had a conversation with one of the comics in Williamsport. Uh, Chappelle is a storyteller, but at a certain point he takes creative liberties with his stories. Where, where there are aspects of his story that are probably not true, and you can kind of hear it, and you can kind of see it, just based on how wild and absurd the, the details of it gets to. Um, but I think that's sort of the point, is like hyperbolizing it to prove the point. Um, it's not my cup, it's not my bag, but I, I, like, I get what he's trying to say, and I get what he's trying to do. But I think the reason why someone like Chappelle has to do that, why, why someone like Chappelle has to um, kind of hyperbolize the story and take some creative liberties with it is because he's he's out of our fucking tax bracket. Like, he's a rich dude. And he's still criticizing other rich dudes, <laughs> right? So, like, he has to do it filtering it through that, that lens of, like, I'm a rich dude criticizing other rich dudes speaking for poor people. Uh, but that's what that's what I'm gonna do. I feel like Chappelle had a lot more concise um, point to what he was trying to do with that special. Where I think Bill Burr, when he criticizes things like cancel culture and feminism, um, and uh, uh, like he talks about Michelle Obama having a book tour, like she's doing an arena tour, like who's the opener, like he did. He he, he talks about that and. The element of it that's missed to me is like, yeah, she's doing a fucking arena tour talking about her book, but does her book like talk about how we need community-based farming and vertical farming and, and rotational farming and how the cost of organic food should be lower so that uh, struggling families can afford it and what the Department of Agricultural uh, can do in terms of like helping poor communities by uh, donating their um, quote-unquote ugly produce. No, she's not fucking talking about that. She's 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 talking pop culture politics and she's doing an arena tour and people will sit there and go, oh, it's Michelle. We know her from the Barack days. And, and all the fucking neoliberals and all the fucking complacent lefties will go fucking sell out that arena. Like, he doesn't talk about any of that. He kind of makes fun of the fact that, like, the first lady is not a job and he flips the narrative by saying if a woman president uh, happens in America, the the husband's not going to be able to say anything. Decent point, done very heavy-handedly, right? And he talks about overcorrections, which I fucking did. I talked about overcorrections in my fucking album. This is fake, Albert. This is fake. I, I'm not. 
you can say the word overcorrection in your special if you're another comedian. That's fucking ridiculous. It's like, they're just like, but that person talked about racism, so you can't talk about it. You're not allowed. So, he talks about, like, overcorrection. But that's how, this is how he opens his special, by the way. With this, like, heavy-handed way of, like, a, like going after uh, the, the the outrage culture, the, the cancel culture stuff. Um, and then, and then kind of taking full jabs at them by being like, I'm going to say some shit that I know is going to be offensive to this culture. Um... Which is like a troll move, right? Like, I think that's what he was doing. Uh, and the Michelle Obama bit, I felt like it, it was just so long to prove the point that if there was a first lady that, that was a man, right? Because there's a woman president in office, uh, that he won't, it, he's not allowed to say a goddamn thing and his opinions don't fucking matter. You know, like these overcorrective measures... Uh, and that's a, that's sort of the the way that I talked about it in my album as well. It's just I didn't do it with the Michelle Obama example. Um, I talked about it through what we see in the LGBTQ community, the positive aspects of over uh, overcorrection, and then the negative aspect of overcorrection. Um, you know, uh, so I I address it less heavy handedly. I'm not trying to like brag. I'm just this is just. You know the the thing that I did in my album versus what he did in his thing, but it, it was a very heavy-handed start, and and I think that's sort of what to me is is it, like the way I would have done it is opened up with the more uh, the the subtler way of doing it would have been to to talk about the kids and his wife and addressing like where does this anger come from like that aspect of it first giving giving the audience and giving the people that are going to watch your special in, in, in this culture uh, a little bit of an understanding of where where old Billy Bathwater is coming from uh, and that's a reference to one of his bits on uh, the special old Billy Bathwater and uh, and then going into some of the cancel culture stuff as something that you're annoyed by something that is that has triggered your rage and that has contributed to, to, to like you dealing with your anger. Uh, and, and then I think rounding it out with like the story about his dog, I think the, the construction of the special, uh, didn't feel cohesive because of that to me. So compared to, to Chappelle's, which, did feel very deliberate and very constructed um, and put together in order to convey a specific argument and a specific point um, Burr special felt a little heavy handed look I'm still a fan of, uh, of both these comics I'm still a fan of this guy uh, and um, you know I watch these specials on, on nights that I have off, on nights that I get to spend with my wife, and I haven't watched all of the comedy specials that have ever existed on Netflix. Uh, I only have so much time, and I, I you know, like, my day is filled with a, a bunch of shit. Uh, like, work, writing, shopping, being a fucking husband, like, that's... so. You know, if you're gonna come out and criticize me for being like, well, why don't you talk about this other special? If there's a special I should watch with X Y Z minority community involved in it, awesome. Let me know. I will probably watch it. I I also probably already have plans on watching it. These are just the two comics that I have recently gotten to watch. But there's also so much buzz around them surrounding the 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 idea of offense and just sort of the critical breakdown of comedy which is why I think it's important to talk about them but a lot of the critiques I've been hearing um, uh, and particularly from Chappelle was that Chappelle talked about a group that he's not a part of and look if you want us to be good like if you want allyship 
than championing for, for rights and championing for equality in every way is important. And if you look at the the joke that everybody's kind of pissed off about, the alphabet people joke, uh, where he goes through uh, the LGBTQ community, uh, who is the punchline of that joke? Intent and... Uh, Intent and context are very important. And in that joke, the LGBTQ community are in a position of power. And who is the punchline of that joke is Dave himself for having warped views or or his sort of stranger views of the community of like, here's what an outsider sees when he looks in kind of a thing. Which is also an important perspective to take in. That's my whole life perspective. I am an outsider looking in. You know, I, I don't fit in with Indian people. I don't fit in with American cultures. So that's kind of what Dave is doing. Um, and society as a whole. Because society hasn't taken the time to get to know the LGBTQ community as closely as it could. There are people that have, but society as a whole probably hasn't. We have to look at an objective view of it, an individualistic view of it, and a collective view of it. That's a very difficult thing to do, and that's sort of what he argues for. But the community in and of itself is not the butt of the joke. And I think people got mad because they were like, well, you're not part of the community, so you don't get to say shit about it. And I think that's it's not helping, you know? Like, that's not helping the conversation. That's not helping people figure out what the LGBTQ community is about. The same goes with, with Billy Bathwater. Uh, is you look, he goes after women and the, and the feminist community a whole bunch. Um, some of it's decent. Other times I'm just like, all right, Bill, it's not 1983. You know, like we're not, we're, 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 we're not uh, doing the women be shopping kind of thing. Uh, and, and what's interesting in that respect is like there are moments where he talks about his relationship with his wife and he's taking ownership of his anger and his sort of ways of dealing with not getting into a fight and addressing where he went wrong and he becomes the punchline of his own fucking joke and that's uh there's a lot of times where he does that you know but he's but the difference is he's just heavy-handed with it So, with with Bill, it's like people are like, "Well, you don't understand the perspective. You don't understand the perspective." And there is one joke where I was like, "I get what you're saying. Like, I understand the point you're trying to make. I just don't think it's illustrated very well. Um, it's just not the best example where where he talks about him being a victim of of uh, sexual assault and uh, and and the aspect of bullying surrounding what happened." Um, the, the example is not specifically the, the worst example. It's not the best example either. Uh, it's sort of... It's not... I mean, what he describes is is bad, right? He basically describes a, a woman that, like, flicked the tip of his dick at, the, at a private show. Which is like, what the fuck? But I've also had, like, women at shows come up and be, like, very aggressively flirty with me. And even though I'm like, ah... You know, and, and then they get, like, very handsy with me when I don't want them to be handsy with me. Uh, and it gets weird and uncomfortable. And I'm like, I gotta go. You know, and, and I've had that sort of stuff happen to me. It's, I, I don't, I don't count it as, like, equivalent to domestic abuse or, or rape or anything like that. It is a discomfort. So, you know, when I see dudes being skeevy or creepy or whatever and they don't have the self-awareness to figure it out either if I'm able to and if you know the person the people involved are like looking for that sort of stuff I kind of like eh don't maybe don't fucking do that but the point he's trying to make is like both genders have been victims of abusive behavior may it be emotional physical uh psychological or whatever and to him, like, the subtlety that, because of how heavy-handed he is, the subtlety of what he's saying goes missed, 
uh, because what he's essentially saying is like, yeah, we should take all of these cases seriously, and when it oh, and and we can see the effects of hypermasculinity uh, in feminism in and of itself when when there are a specific percentage of men that have gone through physical, emotional, and psychological abuse from their partner, or just in general, and we don't talk about it in our society the same way we do with women. Okay, that's a fair argument. We and, yeah, Okay, cool. Like, we can now discuss it the way that we... But because of how heavy-handed he is, the subtle point of that gets missed. Uh, and it was. And the example, like I said, not great. It's okay. It was fine. It was a kind of a goofy, weird, funny story. And he, and if he had said it just to like say it as a story, I think it would have made less of a difference. Um, so, so I understand the critiques of that, and I myself have critiques of that as well. I don't think that's the, the best part of the bit, uh, best part of the special. Um, and, and like I said, I felt like the special was lopsided. I felt like he should have opened with more of the personal, family-related stuff first to lead into some of the heavier. Um, heavy-handed political stuff, and it, and I think it would have lent it would have lent things a little bit better, at least understanding where this dude's where where this guy's coming from. So, um, you know, it's not it's still not my favorite Bill Burr special. Um, I listened to him on Rogan. And, uh, and I, I always like listening to him on Rogan. I think he's got great stories on Rogan. And he reminisces a lot about, like, the old days of comedies and stuff like that. And he's very critical of the old, day of com- old days of comedy as well. And, uh, but I think that's what he is, right? He's sort of in this in-between spot, being that he's 50, um... And he's and he came from like this very hardcore hyper masculine macho macho. This is how a man is supposed to be. This is what life is supposed to be. Kind of upbringing and that sort of and and it's built like some very deep seated anger problems from him. And that sort of stuff is really difficult to break. And he kind of addresses that in the special in and of itself. And he kind of talks about it a little bit when he was on on the Rogan podcast. But the thing is. I, you know, a lot of people aren't listening to, to Bill Burr on Rogan and then watching his special, having that information um, about him, about where he come, his background and all that sort of stuff, inform the material to get a, a deeper understanding of where this stuff is coming from. Um, and even if you don't like the joke, you know, that's okay. Uh, at least you have an understanding of where this guy's coming from, where this cat's grown up at. There's always going to be offensive comics. Uh, I have been called offensive by a bunch of people that, you know, are looking for a pat on the back and uh, don't understand that I do stuff with very deliberate means and there's a reason why I did everything and uh, there's a reason why I say certain things and post certain things. Um, People that have never supported my work uh, or if they have, it's six years ago and... um, miss the point and are looking to like take me down or whatever it is I, I, I've been called offensive and I don't know I understand where they're coming from and but it's never like a discourse of people that call me offensive every comic is going to be offensive to somebody the point of comedy is to push buttons the point of comedy is to push everything up against the line refl- make society reflect on itself um, and Bill and Chappelle are doing that because where society is right now is is at that point. We're not looking to like build and encourage. We are looking to tear down, cancel, get outraged, um, and and that's half of it. That's half the battle. Half the battle is to say I will not accept this. The other half of the battle is, here's how I think I could, we can make it better together. Uh, no, but a lot of people aren't doing that. A lot of people are just like, this is offensive, and we're fucking taking you down! And that's the whole fucking thing. Um, so they're commenting on it. That's the reflection. 
if you're one of those people, you're gonna, fair, yeah, you're one hundred percent gonna get affected by it because that you're you're the target of it. What's happened with comedy now is people are taking what they're offended at and saying this is how everybody else should feel about it. If you don't like the Bill Burr special, that's okay. If you don't like the Dave Chappelle special, that's okay. If I do, that's also okay. <laughs> um, I built my comedy to put something on stage that I wanted to see on stage. Uh, there were not a lot of comics. You know, every show I do is something that I feel very passionate about, and I put everything about who I am as a person into everything that I do, creatively speaking. Uh, the creative persona of myself is very much tied with the real persona of myself. Uh, I'm not going to speak in regards to whether that is or isn't for, for Chappelle and Billy Bathwater, but, you know, I think people... If, if you're a comic that doesn't like what Bill Burr is doing... Uh, or Dave Chappelle is doing. Take the points that they brought up. Take the... Uh, something productive to do. It might be to take what these guys talked about. The the issues that they raised. Talk about it in your act. In your perspective. So if you think cancel culture is a good thing. That's going to bring people together. Great. Make an argument for it using comedy. Can you? Are you willing to take the risk? Are you willing to take the challenge? That is that is what I think is the next step of all of it. You can say that Bill Burr is offensive. You can say that his he's misogynist and all of that. Uh, but, you know, put do the comedy that you feel like you, you want to do. Be honest with yourself. Because I think they're being honest with themselves for the most part. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road.